so let's start this up. Game number one, it is a British mirror between Give You Anxiety and Miyawaki Sakura on Florida. All right, so I am going to quickly turn up the game volume. Unfortunately, it pauses the wreck when I do this. Let's try this. Uh, let's 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 go this. All right, now British Mirror is an interesting matchup because most people think it's just a musketeer spam, and well, generally that is how it does play out, but. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can also play the British Mirror matchup. You can start longbows and, you know, defensive in base with Virginia Company. You can even go for proxy stable. Wiki Cossack is in the chat. He can tell you all about that strategy. But what typically happens is the Musketeer spam. So what I am looking for when I observe this series as a British player myself, it's a British main, is I want to look for any discrepancies in the build order. Is anybody going to build a trading post first? Could we see some Virginia Company at play? We'll have to see. But uh, so far in Age 1, both players just sort of treasuring around the map. Looks like GUA is going to pick up 40 wood soon. Miyawaki, a.k.a. April, is trying to work on 75 wood. And it looks like this is going to be scouted by Give You Anxiety. Could see an early treasure contention here. Of course, because the map is Florida, GUA picks that up nice. Both players do start with this market. And the British start with uh, 300 wood start, so they build two manors and then they have 30 wood left over. And if either player gets a decent sized mm -hmm. coin treasure, they can chop, or, or they can, yeah, they can chop 20 wood and, and get an early hunting dogs. But it looks like so far, neither player's really had that opening. Chiyue does have 40, 40 coin in the back of his base, but doesn't quite pick it up. I'm going to adjust the game volume real quick once more. I'm just turning it all the way up. It's awfully quiet for me for some reason. Perhaps it's just because I am not quite used to no music. Garrow donated 12 bucks, 28 cents. Happy New Year and good recovery to the guy. Agreed. Thank you for your contribution to this very good cause. Of course, this is the Cedric Goodhouse Cup. Cedric is a knowledge keeper of Lakota traditions um, who was brought on as, as uh, fulfilling somewhat of a consultant role um, in the remastering of this game and uh, trying to better inform it. Uh, and we appreciate his help and appreciate the best in his recovery from his kidney surgery. No doubt a very difficult thing to go through. Both players now getting ready to age up. It looks like nearly identical age times. Red is up just slightly sooner. And can I see the politicians? Miyawaki is the governor. That is the, the tower and the 200 coin. And GUA is going up with the Philosopher Prince. So this is the 500 food age up. So already we see our kind of first discrepancy in that um, in, in the age up politicians. And so what this tells me is that Miyawaki is going to play it pretty standard. He's going to age up with the tower, plop it down somewhere mid-map, lay down his barracks too. And GUA doesn't have the the map control presence of an outpost so he's going to be playing defensively which can sometimes be a death sentence in the british mirror but the map is florida and you get access to a lot of safe hunts so we can see g way is already starting to hurt in a couple of these further ones and laying down his manners ahead with some nice line of sight i like this a lot and you can see miyawaki doing this too it's something Haza brought up in 
I think it was when he was co when he was coaching Minimult, or he he was reviewing Minimult's game. I think he brought this up about using houses as line of sight for exposed resources, and, and he says it's kind of like a skill that British players are good at because you you see it in manners a lot. The line of sight is great, and as well, you sort of reduce the walking time of villagers that, that spawn on a manor, like close to res. I mean, I understand they had to walk a ways here, but generally, if you build your manors out on, on a extended hunt, you can reduce the walking time in general. So, okay. Here's the tower from Miyawaki. And yeah, so we see just like a standard mid-map tower hold on i'm going to i need to move the dono bar over that no so there are no spoilers thanks for the reminder harrison all right standard age of tower for red gonna plop that down kind of on gua's fourth hunt i would say so good positioning gonna lay down his barracks behind it and meanwhile yeah the 500 food coming out for gua Normally you see 500 food when you're going for a Virginia company boom or like a stable start. Um, but I mean, of course it is the most amount of resources in terms of Egypt politicians. So it's just kind of greedy. But you sacrifice map control and I just wonder how this is gonna play out mid game for GUA. Seven hundred wood, first card for both players. Now, GOA sometimes likes to play this matchup by shift clicking his first batch of five musks around the map, and we'll see if he does that this time. The nice thing is, is Miyawaki has done a great job getting LOS with his manners kind of all around the map. I'd like to see a manner over here on this side by the coast. Maybe one more way up north, but as of now, we're only five and a half minutes into the game. I think that this is pretty great positioning. And yeah, the LOS provided by this manor is going to get spawned by GUA. So where are these five yes. musks going? They're very, uh, they're acting very intrepid at the moment. And they could be overextending here with the second musketeer batch from Milwaukee. So it does look like he's going to get caught a bit. I don't know if these were on the shift click uh, express or not, but it's going to be a nice pickup for red. And as well, I think he's going to kill the hero with the snare down. Meanwhile, 700 wood, 600 wood for GUA. And Miyawaki has gone for what I would call a more standard British mirror build, which is when you sandwich the five villager shipment between the wood shipments you go 700 wood five vill 600 wood it's slightly more greedy um because you can send those villagers to chop wood get a few more manners out and 600 wood is not a very high value card it's the, the 700 wood five vills 600 wood is kind of the build order you see from like eric aka snow when he plays a brit mirror or like h2o and ryan it's kind of like an old school build, I guess. But right now, Red is just cruising. I mean, he's got map control. He has the two racks up. What are his market upgrades? He's got no place or mines, but he does have steel traps. Meanwhile, kind of the same ups for GUA. He's got his Harrison Greatcoat. Very nice of him. And both players, I think, are on the same... No, okay, so GUA is somehow he just has six more manners. I guess that's on account of shipping 600 wood. Ready. Oh, the Snat Scout yes. treasure is nice. That hero is dead. Zero HP. He's going down. Duke Cook. RIP. This manner is really low HP. I believe manners, just like on EP, on DE, they give extra kill XP. And so, it's actually, it, I mean, it's totally worth killing them if you can get away with it in a Brit Mirror. It's 
it's unlikely that the game will get to a point where yes. your opponent is max manners and can build another manor and benefit from that and has safe resources on the map. So I totally like this decision from April. I would have liked maybe to see him finish it. But Ready. these musketeer on musketeer fights are so fickle. You have to be really careful because half the time it feels like the, the player who wins the British mirror is the player just gets a better engagement in terms of concavity, surround, etc. And so when you're the aggressor, when you're the one poking, you really have to be careful not to get caught out of position by your opponent's, like, you know, more immediate reinforcements and stuff like that. So not much else really going out around the map. Red is using his hero to sort of scout the side res of GUA. And GUA is splitting off some musks to deal with that. Musketeer attack coming in for GUA. Let's take a quick look at Milwaukee. So also sending the same card. So, so far, both players have had nearly identical builds. Just a flipperoo of 700 wooden five bills. Is this going to be the first villager to go down for GUA? Let's take a quick look at the Eco Pops. Identical, right? 40, 44 and 45, nearly identical. And the militaries are roughly the same, too. So, I mean, bo both these players are, we can say, for all intents and purposes, pretty damn even right now. But, on account of the 200 coin and tower age up, Milwaukee just has map control over 75% of the map. And so, as the game continues to progress and both players just keep making musketeers, keep making manners, keep making bills, Everything stays pretty equal, except for GUA is eventually going to run out of hunts. And we can kind of see that happening right now. His next hunt, quote-unquote hunt, would be the couple deer here. Perhaps the turkeys to the east, or if he goes up north, which is pretty exposed, the deer by the native trading post. So I think he'd want to push out before he runs out of res. So he's adding his third barracks now at around 140 mana pop. That's typically when you want to do it. Around 131, one, around 140. He just lost a mana there, so that's a nice XP for Milwaukee. And I think it should let him get his next musketeer up in a little sooner. And yes, he's going to have musketeer HP a little bit before GUA. That could be a nice edge, but it's really hard to discern that sort of thing in game. So it's hard that he knows he should kind of poke right now. But I think he's going to do it. And yeah, the card comes in right before any engagement, but he's got to be really careful because he's very near to these two raxes from, from GUA. And GUA is trying to set up a bit of a, a bit of a surround, I think. Look, he, he's, he's maneuvering his units, Ready. and Milwaukee's just sort of posturing around this barracks. Yeah, yeah, GUA is getting, getting ready. He's going to complete a batch. There's Minutemen, a batch of seven musketeers come out, eight. And this actually looks really good. See, th this is the concavity in the shrine I was talking about, but we have additional musketeers from Milwaukee up to the north. It's hard to say who comes out in this one. Both players have both the musketeer ups. It looks like this is going to be a little better for GUA. His musketeers aren't getting as many pathing issues. And yeah, th this is actually a really great fight, I think. Now, the, the problem is, though, it's not such a great fight that I don't think he can push this outpost in these two barracks. Especially with six musks being shipped now by Milwaukee, presumably to this tower. I think he'll be able to defend just fine. Ready. Meanwhile, GUA has run out of in-base res. So this is when the British Mirror does get interesting because it's a bit of an NR10, but suddenly we could potentially see Lots of raids all around the map. Now this tower is being very effective because you don't want to just... I mean, Jiwei is kind of at a crossroads. Does he siege the tower? You know, does he does he leave it up and just take damage? It's it's why the, the tower age up, I think, is so important in this matchup. Because right here, it's just completely defended 
Miyawaki's forward base and he gets the ship six musketeers to it. And now he is the one who I think has a military advantage. And he's gonna be pressuring GUA off some res. But he his musketeer pathing is just really poor though. GUA has a nice concave. There's there's a very thin line of musketeers, they all get to shoot. And some of Miyawaki's kind of path around a bit. A little awkwardly. And it looks like GUA is taking this fight again. But Miyawaki is up in score slightly. If we just look at Ecos real quick. Miyawaki is up in four vills. But it looks like he's down in military. Where's his army? Is he only on two barracks? I think Miyawaki is only on two barracks. Which is sort of the problem. You you have to be on three barracks right now. Six longbows being shipped to the tower again. So potentially this is... He, he, he just needs a hold, I think. Because then he's got map control. And he's up in a few bills. But this tower might go down before the six longbows pop. Oh, it's going to be so close. It does go down. So the six longbows pop at home. But it looks like he's still going to be able to push GUA back. Even though GUA is on three racks production at the moment, I think he's had a lot of idle time just uh, transitioning his vills to resources around the map. Oh no, Miyawaki's going to get caught out of position. I think that this could be the game winning trade right here for GUA. I mean, th th this is going to go really well, and th this is the critical moment in the game when the res are running out for both players. And yeah, we, we see that just three racks production is so important. Miyawaki's trying to slam down her racks with like 10 villagers, but I think it's going to be a little too little too late. We'll have to see though, there still can be some miracles. These musketeers in melee unfortunately are not really getting the job done. Going to get a couple swings off before being DPS down. And a reinforcing batch of, I think that's like 14 musketeers for GUA. It's close. It's 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 actually though so close, and we see that reflected in the scores. Miyawaki is still ahead slightly in score. Let's hop over to his side. He's shipping. He's calling Minutemen right now and shipping 700 coin. Oh, he actually came out ahead in these military engagements. So if GUA can't defend this hunt, it's kind of game over. Villager taking a few hits. Gonna pull him back though, it's not really time for villager pull. These musketeers are have a lot of high DPS, so it's tough to incorporate villagers when you fight because they're they're just gonna die pretty quick. The Minutemen gonna be really nice extra DPS here. I hope I hope they shoot. There they go. And uh, really just intense musketeer fights going on here. Both players just exchanging wounds, replacing their lost units, but GUA, yeah, GUA is forced to retreat. He's walking about 12 villagers back, and he's really running out of food. Pretty soon, I think we're going to see the villagers scout each other, and this would be a great time, I think, for Miyawaki. He's sort of stabilized on the front, on, on, on the this military front, I think he can start raiding. So GUA kind of senses that he's very exposed over here and he's building an outpost. But now we see the musketeers from red right click over here and uh, a responding outpost from Miyawaki. I'd like to see four villagers on this because I think it's very important that you get the outpost up. But right now, we definitely see the score lead shift um, definitively in Milwaukee's favor. So he's looking to be sitting in a pretty good position. Come on, man. I mean, yeah, th this is the British mirror for you, right? Make musks until Ready. all the res are gone on the map, and then you just have like a big final fight. And it's going to be interesting. <laughs> we, this is a... Uh, how much siege do villagers have? Not a lot. <laughs> it's five? Five. 
Uh, yeah, see, unfortunately, this tower is... Well, it's going to go up now, but he's going to lose a villager because of it. But, oh, okay, what are... What is even going on? All right, so both, player, <laughs> both players uh, getting their villagers involved, trying to get them into punching range, get get the get them soaking the musketeer damage. You want to keep as many musketeers alive as possible so that you can maximize your DPS and focus that on, on the enemy's musketeers. This is p possibly the largest villager pull from both players I've ever seen at one time. We, we got just all sorts of stuff going on right now. <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know how to call this. I, I don't know who's coming out ahead. Um, it honestly, okay, so Miyawaki's bringing in <laughs> reinforcements of 20 bills. Uh, does anybody have any villager gathering? Okay, Jiwei is the only one who has villagers gathering. Miyawaki's brought all of his villagers to these two towers. He's now deciding to mine a bit, but the problem is he's gonna have no reinforcements and he's just shipping two caravels. It's kind of a useless shipment right here. And oh my god, I think we might actually see GUA be pulling ahead. He's closing the score gap, and he's forcing the entirety of Milwaukee's economy off of this position. I don't believe it. I actually don't believe it. This is insane. No, but Milwaukee says, no, not yet. I'm coming back in with all of my villagers, and he's got reinforcing musketeers. Yeah, two caravels not doing much here. Wait, 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 Milwaukee. More, more score now, more score, and it looks like the Musketeer Mask of Jiwei is dwindling only a reinforcement of five musks coming out. And uh, holy cow, I think now Miyawaki has done it. He's got 30 villagers gathering again, 40 in total. Jiwei now has no villagers gathering, so. Okay, okay, I guess Miyawaki uh, came out ahead there. Yeah, you. How often do you see that though? Like that was, those forty villagers from both players just, just punching the the enemy units. Actually, just insane. But with that fight, Miwaki has secured kind of the last area of natural res. There's a hunt down here, but GUA isn't really on it. Miwaki's got like five bills. This is really where the game was won. And okay, I mean, really, this is a useless water fight. I mean. Not really useless because at this point it would be nice to add them some fishing boats, but I think we just saw the game won and lost right there, folks. Damn, all those villagers. Imagine, I mean, imagine being a villager in, in AoE 3, man. You gotta fight these well trained, well upgraded musketeers. It's a bit more than they signed up for, I think. All right, so a desperation saloon coming out from GUA. I don't even know what's in the saloon on this map. Do you get renegados? Can someone educate in the chat? I don't know. But I mean, GUA just has no vills. Okay, he's making pirates. This is really, this should be over with the uh, securement of, of these natural res. We just click on over to Miyawaki's side. He's got a lot of vills working. Pioneers. Oh, man. He has, pine he has Pioneers in deck? Imagine Pioneers in that fight. You know, I never did look on the decks of these players. Uh, Miyawaki's got kind of a, a, a warship focused deck, but man, the Pioneers would have been actually so good in that fight. Imagine if he had sent Pioneers instead of two Caravels. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's wild. I mean, in theory, if Jiwei can hold and throw down a couple docks, uh, but he's only got 35 bills. Okay, and that's that's GG. Uh, Jiwei calls it. So, well played. Man, what an exciting first game, honestly, first of all. Um, between these two players. Both of them, Brit mains, right? Both of them pulling out the main squeeze. GUA kind of notoriously doesn't really like this matchup, but he still clicked into it. Both players have to agree on, on the matchup for game one. And uh, Miyawaki, a.k.a. April, as he's also been going on the ladders, managed to pull it out by the skin of his teeth. Oh my gosh. Let's look at this post game real quick. Um, 
military unit pop really just such a close game pretty much mirrored for both players looks like Miyawaki took though actually maybe a little bit better of a trade here slightly more efficient trades I think throughout the game um, but this is where I think I remember pointing this one out at 14 minutes where wait no actually I thought GUA got a really good trade here either way man Miyawaki pulled it out military <laughs> populations oof yeah so this was that uh, fight at the two towers really just a massive villager brawl and all res gathered I mean pretty close the, the, this was a very close game very close game but in the end 20 more musketeers went in out Alrighty guys, I'm going to throw up the overlay while I get the next game so you guys can't see how many recorded games are in the file path. Very high IQ of me. Thanks Harrison again for that tip. Guys, let me know real quick in the chat if the sound was good, if I need to be quieter, louder, if the game needs to be quieter, louder, etc. can make adjustments before we hop into game number two. All right, we're hopping in. Game number two. Balance is good. Great. What in the world? Oh, I had the view locked on. All right, game number two. This is Isak Pampa Sierras in uh, this best of five match between Give You Anxiety and Miwaka, a.k.a. April. Yes. Now, there are no civilization rules in this tournament, in the Good House Cup. So there, it's no no holds barred. You can play whatever you, yep. Civ you want as many times as, as you like, whether you win or lose. So we see Giving Anxiety sticking with that that main squeeze of his, the British civilization. Meanwhile, Miyawaki choosing to mix it up, and now he's going Sweden. Interesting matchup. I don't know who wins. I think people might say it's Brit favored just because Sweden really struggles to get going in the early game. And Brett can get a pretty powerful Musketeer Mass in Age 2. But as the game goes on, I mean, Sweden has resources at their uh, disposal. They can ship the light cannons to kind of hold the Musketeer push. They can even, I've lost a game as British to Sweden because a Swedish player built an artillery foundry in Age 2. And I was like, what in the heck? And he actually made leather cannons. And it was really effective because I did sort of an all-in Musketeer push. So... Again, I'm, I'm hesitant to say, like, oh, yeah, you know, once it just wins this matchup. So um, we'll just have to see what happens. That's the beauty of AoE 3. And especially these players, I mean, both these players kind of sit around, I think, like, rank 30 to rank 40 on the ladders. Probably more like around rank 30. And so they're both very good, obviously, but it's not necessarily the, the precise play of, like, the top 10 players. You know what I mean? Um, so there are definitely things that can happen to, to, you know, sway the game. Wow, so this is an early Hurtingville from Milwaukee. Shooting that deer. Let's take a quick look at the deck. So G-Way, I mean, this is as standard, uh, standard as a Brit deck is going to get. He has Virginia Company in there, but he's not sending it. Just going with the three Vils. Meanwhile, the Swedish player's deck is more interesting. No blueberries, right? So blueberries is sort of the question, I guess. Of it's, it's the big question in AoE 3 right now, I think, is whether it's worth it or not. Mostly in 1v1. I think in team, it's pretty much always worth it. But uh, on this map... No trading posts. Miwaki's just going to go with the standard three vills. And doesn't even have blueberries in deck. Has colonial militia. Which is interesting. He's going to pick up two cows. Two llamas here. Three llamas for GUA. 
Three llamas. Oh, wait. Okay. One of them was scouted and killed and then has decomposed. Um, but two more llamas remain unscouted. You'd like to see those picked up. But both heroes now on the right side of the map. It looks like GUA's kind of sniffed out Miyawaki's Explorer once again. And potentially could steal another treasure in Age 1. And uh, really just being a thorn in Miyawaki's side here. He, he stole an Age 1 treasure last game. But I think Miyawaki has this. Yes, he has the two doggies. Very nice. I love these things. I actually I actually really like how... Oh, whoa, whoa. Big Steel coming in. Big Steel. Roop, converted. This Nat Scout coming in handy. And... Ooh, why would you delete them? Why would you delete them? Shift, shift click them. He's going to win the hero fight with this Nat Scout. Well, you know, maybe he's just watched a few too many Saturday Smackdowns. Zuda Zuda, brainwashing the youth, just once, you know, says just delete all the livestock. So sad, really. These cows. Actually, the textures, though, look great when you zoom in like this. But, okay. Um, more about the game. Shall we? We see a couple forward vills from GUA. Going to plop down some manners. Probably going to see some aggressive musketeer play. Meanwhile, where are the Torp building vills for Miyawaki? This is actually a pretty good Sweden map because you have two. Well, you really only have one mine. I think that this mine qualifies as your second starting mine. But this mine is very defensively placed, can be torped up nice. It spawns very close to the edge, though, so it could be difficult to get four, tor four torps around that. And this hero should die before he ages up. Yep, there he goes. Nice, cool 45 XP for GUA. And Miyawaki's trying to herd these deer towards the torps, but they are just not cooperating right now. And uh, Miyawaki's going to be up late. 4.45 or so. Jue is already up. He's sending 700 wood. He aged up with the crates of 500 food. And no barracks out of him yet. He's just sort of throwing down some more manners. I'd like to see early barracks okay so we sort of see the aussie drongo i'm coining these the the aussie drongo walls currently um because he does this every game but he ships blueberries instead of three villas but miwaki's going for the hybrid approach instead of shipping three villas and then also walling could work um let's just ship sh uh, shift on over to his perspective He's got 11 bills in this TC. He really wants to save this here, and I think he's going to. He popped out the last bill because it wasn't doing anything. Um, yep, so, all right, so the XP swings. But that's a lot of idle time for Miwaki right now when he doesn't even have the resources to lay down a barracks. That said, GUA has no intention. Whoa, whoa, such an in base barracks from GUA. On top of his town center, I'm not sure I really agree with this. I see no reason why you can't build it mid-map versus Sweden. Sweden is notoriously slow. Um, I, you, you know, I you have all these manners. It's great LOS or LOS. That's you know fantastic. But um, why, like, why why not have your barracks up here too? But uh, you know, Hello? I'm sure Jiwei has got a plan. Meanwhile, this Hello? torp building villager did scout those two yaks, or, well, they're llamas. Apologies. Whoa, this is going to be second interception from GUA. GUA is just intercepting all of these llamas today with this Nat Scout. Wow, pretty sus, if you ask me. Just kidding, that's a joke. GUA doesn't, doesn't map hack. It's all good fun. Um, and deleted again, so more decomposing. This is a lot of decomposing livestock this game. Um not going to be able to prov provide sustenance to the villagers it's okay it's um really nice though that GUA has picked up this the scout unit i really like getting scouting units in h1 from treasures when you're playing against sweden because it's so critical to just have these these units at, at these coin mines throughout the map so you can figure out what the heck is going on and that's kind of why I don't like the in-base barracks, because 
If you're going to go Musketeers, that's great. I would really prefer a centralized location where you have much quicker reach to all of these coin mines around the map. Or if you want to build something in base, why not go for a stable? And Hussars are going to be a lot more effective because they're a lot more mobile at shutting down these Torp villagers. So Miyawaki is on 130 Torp population. He's got you know, 700 wood ironworks, very standard build order. And so his eco is looking really pretty good, I think. But so is the British players on 120 manor pop. Nothing to snuff at. Uh, just making musks, burning torps, and building manors. You know, there's another thing I want to remark on, though. Which is, GOA has done a great job at getting LOS. So he, you can see he's focused on building manors around mines. Because, oh, I get it now. This is pretty clever. Um, he wants to, I think he wants to mostly obstruct just building space for the torps. So he's built his manors on the mines. The problem is he's only done that for the three mines that really don't matter. Like Sweden is not going to ever build torps on these mines because he's going to be so far behind the British player in terms of tempo. And these mines are the most centralized mines in, on the map. It's just not going to matter. I would have really liked to honestly seen some like corks type builds on, on these forward mines from GUA. Even I have seen with effective results sending villagers forward and just throwing down some wall segments for 15 you know for 20 wood you can completely block off a mine from having any torps built on it and uh, you force your opponent to make Carolians to defend it but if you're the British player you're always going to have the musketeer advantage so I think that that could have been a good strategy still though GUA is doing a really nice job Killing these torps and he's getting, you know, ready to macro to age. Meanwhile, Miyawaki's already going up. Alright, Carly in charge. I like it. Get in there. Nice. You know, they look really... They, they look nice with the swords. Kind of like proper musketeers, except for... They're Swedish, not French. Is musketeer like an originally French thing? I feel because when I th think of musketeers, I think of like the Three Musketeers and that that French novel. Um, but the British have the best musketeers in AoE three, so I don't know. Um, anyways, these Carolians are gonna get trapped. They've already used their charge ability and won't be able to escape very well. Ooh, that was cheeky. Splitting off one Carolean to kill the, the low HP Musk. So the Swedish player is an H3. He's lost some Torps, but he is up to 120 Torp pop. I mean, still pretty good. He's got a lot of idle villagers here. He needs to get those guys working. Meanwhile, GUA himself, uh, about a third of the way up, going to keep making Musketeers. He's got a really good eco, 40 villagers. Um, at just 9 minutes, 20 seconds. So nice eco from him. Hasn't even shipped the five villagers in H2. And now, I mean, if he can get some LOS on these two two mines and just contain Sweden to these four, I think he'll be in a good position. But the such a large benefit of having these shrine type units. I invoke the shrine because it's sort of the the example of this phenomena that your opponent is forced to siege these things around the map and you can put them like on the corners of the map which is not really where you want your army to be and you have LOS that they're sieging it so I call shrines map hacking factories because they they it, it is kind of like a soft map hack like you just know where your opponent's army is um, at least at this stage in the game like this is GUA's army and so um, Miyawaki is like completely comfortable to just push mid map, which is the much more important part of the map in, in an RTS game. You want to be like mid map, not in a corner. Commandament. So, just standard stuff from the Swedish player. Um, doesn't have veterancy yet, and he doesn't have it in queue, and he only has one barracks. I feel like around this time with a blueberries boom, Sweden could be on like three barracks. 
So, as this game goes later, Sweden doesn't get as scary as they can with blueberries. And so I actually think that the Swedish player is on the clock. And uh, Giwei up in score, of course, we expect the British player to be up in score, but he's like really up in score. So um, I think Miyawaki's got to do something, but I don't know if he really has a window to punish because Giwei surely, yep, he's got two Fox of his own and he's even building a Culver Ugh, Culverin, apologies, which is going to help him definitely win the Falcor. And this is how a lot of games with Sweden go, is it becomes sort of like an artillery war. It's whoever wins the artillery war wins the game, because Sweden really relies on uh, Falconets completing their composition, because on their own, Carolians are not that impressive until you reach age four. Must combat coming in now. Like, I think GOA is in a great position to stop this fight. Miyawaki's gonna get a lot of XP from these manners, and I almost think he should maybe back up after he kills this because surely you can sense that the Brit player's got a big thing coming. And yeah, there's a Falconet dead, Gonzo. And I like to call this the GUA um, Falconet march. You just you just you really just right click the Falks up there. And you just you tempt the opponent to just turn around and shoot him, but it's a massive bait because look at that, I just lost tons of units because you can't really just turn around and snipe a falconet like that. So love to see that from GUA. It's something I've been employing in my own games. I'm just charging in my falconets like that. It's just it's just so fun. Um, Milwaukee's falconet's got to be careful here. Kind of pull it here. Oh, this is a really well placed nat scout. Almost too invisible. I almost couldn't see this on the map. So, um, love to see that from GUA. Uh, second, just like only now, the second barracks coming down for the Swedish player, when really they should be on four, five, maybe six barracks right now with blueberries. So, it's just uh, it's just a little feels bad right now for the Swedish player. I think if you don't go blueberries, you should probably go mercs. But it's tough going mercs too because mercs are kind of dead because uh, spies exist. But okay. Do we see a Carolean charge? Carolean charge coming out here? No, he's just going stagger mode. Surely this charge has has uh, um, refreshed. It, it, it's cooled down. Um, but no, he's just going stagger mode. He's going to be able to snipe the two Falconets. But how does he kill these these cab combat musketeers, which are a lot stronger than the Swedish musketeers right now? And the answer here is he's not going to. He's going to lose his battle hard. Uh, he does have some reinforcing Carolians coming in. Uh, and, and he does have snap lock, so he does outrange these guys a bit by three range. So that's sort of his fight winning win condition is he's got to kite these musketeers. Um, but it's 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 easier said than done, for sure. Oh, I said cav combat musketeers. That's my mistake. Thanks for the uh, correction. Max. Must combat musketeers. Rather, that would be that would be something else. Yeah, and I mean the, the British player is just cruising right now. Let's go switch over to GUA's perspective. He's got that reinforcing batch of three Falks coming and the, and the yes. nine musks shipped. Come on, just really for putting the herd on with the main squeeze. And uh, looks like he's gonna tie the series up one one. Of course, Milwaukee took game one. That was a British mirror. But, I, I mean, in in such a Civ format as this, where there are no Civ restrictions, I think GUA might really be able to perform well if he can just stick with that main squeeze. Let's take a look at the raids here. A couple of unfortunate uh, bills having a tough go out of here while their bodies decompose. That's... Uh, <laughs> they're really, they're, she's really, <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> okay, more, should I restart my game? These are bugging out too, the, it must be a very painful death, um, Carolians are going to charge away, it looks like, so this is the hack of pellet, it's kind of the unique Swedish unit, um, and it behaves interestingly. It has a ranged 
ready. mode and a melee mode. Um, but they're all going to die. And that's typically what happens when yes. I make hack pellets is they all die. Uh, so I usually just stick to, to Carolians. And Milwaukee calls the GG. And that's game number two over. So the series is currently tied one to one between these two. It's the uh, round of eight in the Esau Goodhouse Cup. And um, British just being really strong on this map. And well played by GUA. And I, I really like the idea of just slamming down the manners on the mines. But uh, no blueberries. Let's take a quick look at some graphs while I drink some coffee. Yeah, Sweden just never really able to get a big mass going. Brit just kind of ahead in eco, ahead in military. Uh, the whole game. All right, I'm going to throw on the overlay once more while I get another recorded game out. Um, I keep opening the wrong thing when I do this. Load. All right, we're hopping straight into game number three. In this best of five series between Give You Anxiety and uh, Miyawaki, AKA April, as he has been sometimes going on the ladder. So, um, wow, okay, we got another Brit Mir. The map is Kamchatka, and the matchup is Main Squeeze versus Main Squeeze. Part two, uh, Electric Boogaloo, I think is how the meme goes. And um, the first game was like the most exciting Brit Mirror I've ever seen, so I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel. Both players doing standard things, getting that starting uh, monkey or macaque and sending their heroes to the mid map to pick up some goats. And uh, both players starting with that two manor start. Milwaukee's a little slow to get us down, but that's okay. Um, we, I d we might see a goat interception. GUA intercepted like six animals from Milwaukee last game, so Miwaki says, taste of your own medicine. I'm going to steal your stuff now and prove my worth by not immediately deleting them and, and taking the time to bring them back to my TC because it's actually a very important advantage. Can can swing games sometimes to have that extra food from the goats. But uh, as a result, though, his hero won't be looking for those really nice treasures out on the map. Treasures like 40 wood... So far, just 40, another 40 wood. It's basically just the wood ones. Um, and actually, as far as this map goes, very few wood treasure spawns. Uh, only two 40 wood treasures, so. Neither player, I don't think, is going to be getting like a decisive advantage from age one. Let's take a look at the decks, shall we? Okay, interesting from GOA. I think that this is a Britmere specific deck. Oh, we can see the deck names as a caster. So, this is called Tour G. No idea why, um, but it's got Advanced Arsenal and the Highlanders, which I really like to see in a, in a mirror. Meanwhile, let's switch over to Miyawaki. Um, I can't speak Korean. Uh, if anybody knows Korean in the chat, let us know what this deck means. Um, and another decent Brit Mirror deck. He's got Advanced Arsenal um, and Pioneers. I mean, we saw the Pioneers come out in game one, so it's not out of the question to see it again. It says Mirror. Thank you, Mr. Duck. I, I actually like, I mean, I like the Pioneers a lot in a Mirror. I think I might kind of steal his idea and throw that into mine. Because a lot of these British games come down to villagers exposed all over the map, and if you can have, you know, plus 65 HP on them, like th like this is like a late game card in the Brit Mirror, and I think it can actually be good. 
Match one deck was named Watermere. All right, thanks. Looks like April is uh, prepared. Gonna pick up this uh, curious treasure of 25 XP, 25 coin. Now let's see what both players are aging up with. So governor from Milwaukee, which I, why did I forget the politicians all of a sudden? I'm pretty sure that that's a tower and treasure coin. Same with GUA. So I think GUA kind of saw the error in his ways last, uh, the, the first game. There's a British mirror. And so he's going up with the gov with the governor now. And uh, 80 coins, this could be a very important treasure in, in the mid game. Giving my voice a bit of a break, guys. Drinking some coffee. Yes. Just kind of enjoying the mood, honestly. You know, it's been a while since I've cast it. I, the, when I first spoke, I was it was kind of bad, but I think it's getting better. So it's good when bad things get better. Yes. And really enjoying it, man. You know, I just want to you know extend another happy holidays to everyone watching, to the good men and women on Twit or on YouTube that will be watching this probably in 2021 which seems cool to say. And another treasure contention, GUA just always seems to be at every single treasure that Miyawaki is at, kind of I Am Turk-like. Maybe he's been getting coached after he beat I Am Turk in that British mirror. And he gets the steal off. Really tough blow for Miyawaki. He's forced to go back. GUA gets that snare down. This macaque can break the snare if he wants to, but it's just like, it's a really um, involved part of the game right now for the British player. You're slapping down manners. You're getting ready to age up, send 700 wood, you know, build your barracks, send a tower. But it looks like he does get his hero there. He pulled it away. Very nice mechanics from him. And uh, I think Gio is going to try to block the barracks. But it, will he? Will this deer get out of the way before it's blocked? No. Very uh, just like yes. high high IQ play from Gio going on right now. He's in the flow. Yes. Um, but he's going defensive again. He says, you know, that wasn't really the problem first game. I can still just go in base as long as I have a tower, everything's fine. But again, it looks yes. like a lot of hunts, but this is not a lot of hunts for the British player. It's really not. It's going to be gone in like by like 10 minutes. So, but we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. The earlier barracks comes down from Milwaukee. And he should start musketeer production. He does. Take a quick look at market upgrades. Got Gangsaw and Hunting Dogs for Milwaukee and uh, the same for GUA. So pretty mirrored there. GUA's barracks came down a little bit later um, and he doesn't have an extra manor or market upgrade. So it's kind of a, a slight disadvantage there, but shouldn't be a big deal because he's in base. He's just gonna slap down lots of manors now typical Brit things and only a batch of this is a really early second barracks and he only got a batch of four musketeers out um, for Milwaukee and he's sending 600 wood second so I'm not I I think that this second barracks this early is a bit of a mistake um, disclaimer I think I've lost every single game to April on the ladder so uh, he, he's certainly a very good player, um, but I just I just don't with 600 wood coming down. I feel like you just cannot sustain, he, you know, struggling to sustain production from one barracks. I think the second barracks is a little too early. Does do his villagers even have steel traps? Okay, at least they have steel traps. Um, same for GUA, and both players now going for mirror card orders too. So 700 wood, 600 wood. And all right, here we see the first, yep. So GUA's first five musketeers were shift clicked around the map, um, but Miyawaki does scout that with the hero. And it's got, again, really nice LOS with the manners. So I really like this from him. Um, and GUA says, well, okay, this was scouted by the hero. Let's just go back. It's not really worth it. Because Miyawaki we see is reacting with some musketeers of his own. And uh, GUA picking off that macaque scout. 
Meanwhile, scouting his opponent with his own macaque. And shipping five villagers after the 600 wood. So let's see, or at least that was Miyawaki. Um, GUA doesn't quite have his third shipment in yet. Um, and I think that's just on account of being a bit behind in the musketeer production. If we look at the manor pops, GUA has one extra manor. Got to be careful with these musks. Again, I mean, he's really overextended here. Uh, and April is going to get the first shots off and taking the better trade here. Some flanky musketeers and a full HP hero from GUA. That can be really tough to deal with. And still, though, Red is getting a really great trade and getting some raids in back home of his own, forcing the Minutemen call at least two villagers died that I saw and only... Only two villagers decomposing bodies. There's the third. So I think just three vills go down. Um, but GUA, uh, I mean, this hero is tanking a lot of shots there. That I think GUA is actually going to come out ahead in this fight, even though I don't think he should have. But that is the power of full HP hero early on in the British Mirror. I think very valuable asset. Still, though, overall, killing three villagers, definitely in favor of Miyawaki. Uh, if we just look at the Eco Pops... Uh, 39 for red and 34 for blue. So, um, oh, uh, pardon me. Earlier I said that the build orders were mirrored. Not true. Um, they've actually just flipped from game one. In game one, red went 700 wood, five bills, 600 wood, and now he's going 700 wood, 600 wood. And in game two, GUA has now gone 700 wood, five bill. So, um, interesting development. Miwaki is slightly ahead in score, but things are overall pretty even here. Once GUA collects the 600 wood and starts laying down some manners, uh, we'll see that go up. Yes. Both players going for some Ready. some Ready. three musk grades around the side of the map Ready. that kind of missed each other. Meanwhile, Red Ready. definitely has the musk advantage mid-map, but a batch of 10 musks is going to be coming out for GUA. This macaque going to get punched down by that hero. These three raiding musketeers from Miyawaki going to be picked off. That's a great pickup for GUA. But again, there's this larger mass of musketeers pushing the main base. And if GUA is not careful, this is, these are definitely going to pick off Villager. Oh, just oh, just barely gets in the TC. But I think one of these is dead. Uh, nope. So that's the value of great coats. Get your great coats, boys. Everyone. Um... Throwing down manners from that 600 wood. The, the macro is rough, though, for GUA right now. He's got 1,000 coin, 20 idols, and nobody on coin. Or 1,000 uh, food. Meanwhile, Miyawaki, again, with full map control, right? Free, uncontested mid-map. Great LOS with the manners, and now he's going to try to get some LOS from a, from a wall. Um, his macro is quite a bit better. And, and again, just this will translate over time. GUA is going to be more exposed out on the map. And this is what I said early on. The, I said the hunts in base are only going to last for 10 minutes. Well, it's nine minutes, and look how many hunts are left. Very few. GUA is forced to go up here and start containing this hunt. Now, the thing about Kamchatka Summer Spawn is that these are actually very wallable chokes. You can build a wall in, in the shallow stream. And everything else is impassable, so I think it would it would be very prudent in a British mirror to wall it off. Um, you can also build docks and boats. That's kind of like a late game thing, you know. But I think Red has figured out the GUA's got to be gathering up here, but this is tricky because. This is still a lot closer to GUA's Rax reinforcements than, than it is to Milwaukee's, so I think he can't really push it quite yet. Meanwhile, the three Musketeers in base did force a Minutemen call. Sometimes it's good just to, you know, th th those units were really annoying. But picked off for free by the Minutemen. I mean, look at this LOS. Like, like uh... I don't know, like April just has the whole map and it's a British mirror. That's so important. Manor pops, almost identical. Miyawaki is one more. Let's take a look at the barracks count. So two barracks for Miyawaka. He was really late to get that third barracks up 
in game number one, but he did manage to pull it out and win. So I trust his judgment. But both players only have two barracks. Musk attack being shipped for GUA. These musks can easily take on these longbows, but they're getting pushed off. Perhaps he just wanted to make his presence known, force a reaction from GUA, and then right-click these hunts, but um, GUA is being smart about it. We, we see another uh, GUA patented um, musk shift click here. Trying to go in for a raid, but not a, a lot of exposed stuff here. Let's just take a quick look at Musketeer upgrades. So Milwaukee has both cards on his Musketeers, yes. and GUA is just now getting attack. So definitely there is the technology advantage here for Red, but these Musketeers on, are actually yes. going to be able to get some work done. But this is the more important on, battle. Yes. Um, how is the concavity going to work out here? Red feels like he has to go back, and it does look like the GUA has enough units and he's got the better concave but these are the better musketeers meanwhile these three musketeers it looks like have gone unnoticed and are just being s okay no batch of musketeers back there to deal with it but how is this fight going this actually looks kind of even red's even forced to go back here jiwei's playing this really well it looks like sort of winning both fronts at least picked off one bill here and is pushing red back over here but some more reinforcements from red again jiwei has to sort of win the game now because he has no res and with these additional reinforcements I think red is going to push giving anxiety back and this hunt could fall these all this idle time from these villagers the longbows you know nice range around this rock but uh, yes let's just take a quick look at eco pop so GUA 47 eco pop Miyawaki has 52 so red is ahead in that regard but uh, blue has a handful more musks kind of tough to say. Looks like these raids are finally going to get cleaned up. And so Red has sacrificed a few villagers, but he's, he's picked off a few more musketeers. So I think he's just got to consolidate, bring his army together, ship the six musks to the tower, and then I think he's ready to take a fight. And it looks like that's exactly what he's getting ready to do. Meanwhile, GUA is kind of splitting red's armies up a little awkwardly now he's going to try to push the main base and yeah miyawaki could be in trouble here because his main army is so far out of position oh gua was the one shipping six months wait so gua has the tempo here actually um although some nice raids from miyawaka here I'm gonna pick off a couple bills that tower is for sure dead. Ah, oh, cheeky little longbow raid, to be honest. But this is this is going to be all about maneuvering and army positioning, because I think the military populations are roughly equal. And I do give the advantage to Red here. He's fighting closer to his two barracks, but he's losing a few units for free. Yes. And uh, these longbows are being very effective at being distracting. Still, though, I mean, they're going to get picked off, and I don't think they've killed a villager. Meanwhile, Miyawaki has stabilized at mid-map, and he killed a few villagers from GUA, so I think he's still in the lead. Yes. And uh, some people might ask, well, if Britmere, why are Britmere's only yes. musks? Why not make longbows? I think you'll see it right here if both players micro their units. Um, but, okay, this is the more important fight, so. Big mass of musketeers for both players. Maybe some longbows would be good now because this is a, a kind of the numbers of musketeers we're pathing really becomes an issue. But both players trying to get their musketeers in there. GUA is doing a really nice job of trying to get a good concave, minimize the, the pathing and range issues of his, of his musketeers. Still doesn't have musk HP, um, and, and I think that's a big mistake for him. These trades are just going all that much better for Miyawaki. He's cleaned up the longbows in the back of the base. And I think he's going to stabilize just fine. Six longbows pop back at home. He's going to be able to bring them up. Maybe he retreats to the barracks. Yeah, so he's going to be able to push Chue off res. So, I, I mean, this is looking great for Miyawaki so far. 
uh, the battle of the main squeezes, and he's kind of winning them. Gua again, I, I've seen him on his Twitch say he doesn't like this matchup, so but he keeps clicking into it. Perhaps he doesn't have a sieve that he feels comfortable playing against uh, uh, April's main squeeze, other than his own main squeeze. So, ah, uh, yeah, this is gonna be that. Yeah, that's a big raid. If we just look at the eco pops. 64 for Milwaukee and GUA is at just 48 and uh, is also has about half the military population um, only on two barracks right Milwaukee is, is full production he's got got three barracks rolling uh, that's a batch of 15 musketeers and he's just gonna yes. keep cleaning up and uh, this one's looking kind of over um, that said, I I watched I watched the most miraculous comeback in the British Mirror I've ever seen, maybe in any game ever, um, of GUA versus I Am Turk on a ladder game. It was a Brit Mirror. GUA just did the most horrendous build order I've ever seen. It was super far behind, like eight minutes, and then he just he shift click musks all over the map and just out multitask I Am Turk. It was it was the most insane thing I've ever seen. It was super awesome. Um, super uh like skillful um to to be able to play like that versus her so maybe we can see a similar comeback here versus miwaka but with this many vills exposed it seems really unlikely and uh more musketeer reinforcements coming in for red he red is just so far ahead in, in, in the economy at this point he can just afford to take really terrible trades because his reinforcements are just going to be so much better and yeah, he, he's winning the main fight here. And uh, really well played by Kim Walken. Yeah, yeah, see? Um, that summarizes GOA's thoughts on this <laughs> particular matchup. Um, and Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the civilization rules. Both players agree on a matchup for game one, and then the winner chooses their civ first next. So, Miyawaki chose Sweden in game two, and GUA countered with Brit. And then after winning, GUA chose Brit, and Miyawaki countered with Brit. So, um, smart play from Miyawaki. If you if you know your opponent isn't really comfortable in, in the main squeeze mirror, and you are, why not go for it? So... Really nice play out of him. Take a quick look at the graphs. Military pop. Uh, just a... Yeah. I mean, I guess it, that's the difference having both cards on your musks make. Um, I think some of GUA's pop wasn't necessarily at the fight, but that's a, that's a really nice trade for Red. You can't ask for anything better than that. Meanwhile, villagers... Again, Red's just kind of in the driver's seat with full map control, it feels like. And LOS everywhere. All res gathered. Milwaukee comes out ahead, too. So, Milwaukee takes a lead in the series. He's up 2-1. to one. It's a best of five. Putting on this overlay again. So as not to make any spoilers. All right, we're popping in to game number four. It looks like there's an odd phenomenon in these recorded games where it takes some of the post-game chat from last game and puts it at the beginning of the next game. And so what we saw there was some post-game chatter from Milwaukee from the previous game where he agrees with GUA. It's pretty much just a Musk Z move. Nice to see both players pretty... Uh, good sports um, I th this is actually the series I was looking forward to most 
um, because I think both these players are very evenly matched and they kind of sit around where I sit on the ladder, um, actually further ahead. Um, but I've, I've played both of them quite a few times, so it's just it's just cool to see them play each other in a tournament se uh, setting. But uh, quick introduction for this game. It's game number four. This is a best of five series between Give You Anxiety and Milwaukee. It's a round of eight in the Esau Goodhouse Cup. And the matchup is Giwei sticking with that main squeeze. Again, guys, I'm sorry I keep saying that, but uh, it's just, just yeah. how it is. It's the truth. Uh, playing the British Civilization and Milwaukee switching things up now playing France. So Milwaukee did have the counter pick. And this map is Manchuria. So we have the Yaks out on the map. GUA just, he's consistent this series. If he converts a, a livestock, he, he deletes it. Doesn't want to risk uh, giving Milwaukee any interceptions with that NAT scout. There are some good wood treasures out on the map. Can I, I, I can't seem to look at the treasures picked up, so I'll just start paying attention. But um, the important ones are, well, of course, this is a great treasure. If you can get it, it takes a lot of units. Um, but uh, a trapped construction team qualified to build war huts and stables. Very cool. More just the deleted livestock. A lot of decomposing bodies this series. But we, we see a couple yaks make it home to, to GUA's base. And 90 wood here in the corner of the map. It's going to be nice to scout from Milwaukee. Let's take a quick look at the decks because this is a water deck. So, yeah, wow. We um, see fish market here from GUA. This is an interesting deck and schooners, no Virginia company. So potentially we could see a water boom from the Brit player. I, I don't know how I feel about Brit water booms. It just, sometimes it just feels like manners are better, but um, you only have, well, I mean, you still have like three safe hunts, but uh, of course, if you go see, it really prolongs the life of your in-base res, which uh, usually is a very short life when you're the British player. But GUA clicking up. He's got a lot of vills. Wow, 17. Nice for him. And um, let's take a look over at Milwaukee's point of view. Let's take a look at his deck. I'm guessing this means water, too, or something. Uh, he, l he loves the Pioneer's card. Um, really an effective card with, with the French, for sure. Ooh, unfortunately, the Lion aggroed this native scout. Not. Ah, oh man, that's tough. Uh, losing this very valuable asset early in the right. game. Not something you want to do, but it is what it is. At least he gets 90 wood. But um, looks like Miyawaki ate a yak or something to age with 13 vills. Um, normally you see right. France, well, 14 is, is the, the standard, What's but that? more and more it looks like the meta with France is to age up as soon as you can, whether that be a 1210 with some food treasures and some livestock, or even just cutting one vill and going 13 vill is is, uh, is good, because France's early economy with these Cour de Bois worth 1.25 vills is very fast, efficient, good, etc. Et <coughs> sorry, etc. Um, Basically, what I mean is, is they can have a, a strong tempo advantage if they can age up early. So we'll see what Miyawaki makes of this earlier age up. Meanwhile, GUA, though, um, actually going to be aging up a little bit before because uh, the British civilization is very good like that. And hasn't sent schooners, so this isn't going to be like a hard water boom, but potentially GUA always has that option in his back pocket to add a water economy. Looks like the red hero got away from that snare. Very nice from him. And two forward base vills. I wonder what's going to come out here for Milwaukee. I, I'm assuming the barracks. Oh, don't worry, guys. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sick. My voice just gets a little raspy from casting. All right. Very 
aggro tower coming out here, but this is a really effective scouting unit. Just immediately GUA sees the two two barracks. It's like he just it's like he wanted to just only scout without out outpost wagon. Another really high IQ play coming out from GUA. And um a really all in build, I guess, from the French player. I mean shipping seven wait wrong player. Milwaukee. Um, shipping 700 wood first, yeah. So this looks like it's going to be two racks bow pike. Um, and going 600 wood after 700 wood, not, you know, skipping the four quarter bois. And I'm not sure this is the best versus Brit. Um, I think it's good as like a surprise, but since this was immediately scouted by GUA, I think just some in base longbows and a tower should do the trick. But he's going to have to be careful and micro his villagers and make sure not to lose them. Now, what I think the French player should do is go stagecoach behind this. I think if you send 700 wood, 600 wood, go two racks, you can really force the British player to do what he's doing, which is just like curl up into a ball and just stay underneath his TC and outpost. And with all those wood crates, I think you plop down some teepees after this first batch of units, uh, get stagecoach, and um, and then ship four CDB. But we'll see. Doesn't look like that's necessarily his plan. Let's hop over to his side because I'm curious what his macro looks like. He's going to be adding in pikes now. He's got two batch of, of 10 crossbows out. So he's got 20 crossbows. Um, but uh, but these longbows are just so much better. And this is really the, the struggle of doing the strat versus Brit is they can just do their longbows. And... Uh, we oui. just a few pikes here to protect against any cav, but GUA doesn't have any cav out, um, and you just you just can't ever push the base, which is why I really would have liked to have seen some stagecoach follow up, but um, that's easy to say when you're a caster and you're working with perfect information. As a player, these things are uh, difficult to to um, ascertain. But still going with two racks production, and uh, he does get his four Cour de Bois shipment in after the two wood crates. It's gonna be, it looks like he's gonna be now trying to apply some pressure. Let's hop over to GUA's POV. He's laying down a second barrack, shipping vills. He's got a decent amount of longbows, but still, if you've been on just one barracks production for so long and your opponent's been on two, you are inevitably going to be behind in units. But with the tower, the TC, and Minutemen, I think he's going to be totally fine. Um, but he, does, he doesn't have the res for Minutemen, but he is going to get a batch of five longbows out, and I think with that he's just going to be totally fine. I'd like to see these musketeers in the mix, like picking off these pikes from the side, but still Milwaukee just doesn't feel confident. Feels like he's got to back off. And he's going to pick off this hero for 45 XP, but kind of a small pickup right there. Um, I mean, they're, you know, also with this large military mass, and if you can't poke in, a, you know, maybe pick up this very valuable treasure. It, ju it just feels like France's entire idea has just kind of run out of steam. Um, and there's just, there's very little follow-up. So he's building his own stable here. But what does his, his eco look like? The British player is on two racks. He's got 100 mana pop. 37 vills and most of the relevant market ups. Meanwhile, Miyawaki has only 25 quarter bois. Doesn't have place for mines quite yet. Kind of running out of pop room soon. He, he shipped the coin, so he's going to be able to make some Hussars here. Get a nice Hussar batch out. But uh, at this point, I think you have to kind of focus on just containing the British player. Um, this is a really rough push to make because as he's uh, walking forward and then as he's retreating he's taking a lot of hits from these long bowmen and, and suffering some losses there it's 
and I wonder if it wouldn't be better for the French player to cancel these five husks and just age. Um, again, I, I think France can probably, can maybe stage two if, if they have a stage coach follow up, but uh, the, Br the British eco is just really going to um, get out of hand and he, he's got the better unit composition in H2 and he's adding Hussar, oh wait, wrong player. Um, okay, he's shipping six musk. I'd like him to add kind of some more musks too. Uh, another batch of longbows, but okay. Um, he should be fine for whatever upcoming push. The five husks are going to be nice to get some raiding done, but Jiwe again with the IQ, right? He positions his hero where he's lacking LOS um, and, and and really well sensed by him because he sees these Hussars coming in uh, and the longbows moving in position to cut off these crossbows. So really nice play from him. Look at that. They're going to get some really nice shots off. The SAR's gonna be trying to come in here. Jue gonna bring the longbows back. Doesn't complete his longbow batch. No, he just queued up six right at the end. Uh, so this could be dicey actually. If he had another six longbows out on the field, I, you know, you'd be feeling a lot better. But um, actually, the Hussar placement is really nice from the Waka. Uh, but here come the Minutemen. The Musketeers are finally getting out on the Hus. The longbows are doing good damage. And a batch of 10 longbows are queued in the back and I'm popping up these reinforcements. Only three husks coming in for red. I don't think it's going to be enough. Um, Jiwei is going to sort of retreat back into his base. Going to benefit from the obstruction and pathing, but by these trees and pop out 10 longbows behind everything. That's a really nice reposition repositioning from him. And going to be picking off these, these units as they're drag boxed away. So nice hold from Jiwei here, but he is exposed, and uh, I don't know why I flared that. Sorry, uh, habit, I guess. Um, and the French player, rather than, you know, it rather than trying to take a head-on fight versus Britain H2, I think he's just got to play around these res more, um, and and take a fight in the open. Let's uh, hop over to his POV. What's going on? Not anywhere near aging. Still making husk. Still making musk. But just a, a lot less eco than the British player at this point. And soon his units will be worse because um, Jiwei will have yes. unit upgrades. He doesn't have any right now, but he has them in deck, the musketeer ups. And once those come into play, this matchup really shifts in favor of the British player. I feel yes. me stronger now. So it looks like Red has kind of figured out where GUA is gathering, but GUA's got a lot of army here to defend this and look at that. Look at oh man dude. Yes. Uh, a mass of longbows can be so devastating sometimes and they just picked off a SAR for free there. Really high damage value units. And um, now we got the fish boom coming in and out for GUA. So no, no Skinner's shift, but uh, it's going to be supplementing his economy anyways. And moving these longbows, maybe not ideal right there, but oh yeah, going to be shredding these these red units. The Musketeers getting some awkward pathing around this market. Honestly, just delete the market. What in the, the, the heck was that pathing? Um, this could actually be a good fight for Red if, if he can get his hus on top of these longbows. They're going to keep trying to come back in this, in this defensive positioning. Um, nice musketeer placement now, going to be putting some of them into melee, but these bows are doing a lot of walking, these longbows are doing a lot of walking, and you really don't want to see that. Holy crap, wait, no, Red is just completely taking this fight? Wait, Red is completely taking this fight. And the crossbow hus is just proving superior at the moment, the longbow is just too much walking, too few musks, couldn't defend against the, these hussars, and uh... And, and wait, Red's actually just, I wait, Red's actually just one? Wait, Red's actually just one? Look, all these exposed villagers, okay, if you can high APM and garrison some of them in these fishing boats, which you're going to have to do, but, but, I mean, 
I think, wait, red's just cooking now. He's going to ship eight crossbows. He's going to keep making units. He doesn't have a single unit upgrade in H2. But I think he just took such a good trade. He's up in score. Anytime you see British down in score, the game is probably over for them. That's how much manners and fleet score. And uh, that was just such a great fight for red. I don't know. Gio has got to got to pull out a miracle here if he wants to stay in. Um, Bonjour. Oui, oui. Oui. Really, I think Gio just needed to add some stars of his own. I, if you go three unit composition versus just, you know, Red didn't have any musketeers then. It, like it was just crossbow huss. If you add huss to your own, I think it's really strong. But um, it's just what a great engagement for Red there. And he's in the driver's seat. If he wins this game, he takes the series. He's already up 2-1. to one. G -A ungarrisoning some of those bills onto the tree line by the shore. But this is this just looks really rough. He's running out of map, running out of safe res. And, oh, Miyawak is shipping two caravels right here. That's going to be brutal. Going to clean off this, this fishing boat and the villagers on the wood line. And that might just seal the deal. Yeah, and it does. Looks like GUA resigns, and so Milwaukee, aka April, winning the series three to one, best of five. Really well played by both players. I think that was a that was a fantastic series, exciting games. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought GUA was taking this one 100% while I was watching. Let's take a look at the military pop for that fight, because that's the that's the crucial part. And yeah, so. Milwaukee is a bit ahead in the population, but GUA has defender's advantage. That should be, I think, a pretty even trade, but it just went so in favor of red. And that's the love-hate relationship you have with longbows. Sometimes they feel so, so good, but if they can't just stand there and shoot, they're a trash unit. And I think that that's what we saw, just not enough anti-cav, the longbows had to walk, and 80% of your army is doing nothing at that point. And 80% of your army only has 95 hit points, so...